Okay, so the next way we're going to look at graphing data is going to be a stem and leaf diagram. So a stem and leaf diagram is sort of similar to a bar chart on its side. Um, we use it when we have small amounts of numerical data points, and it's useful because sometimes we can see each data point, and you can see the distribution of data. So you'll see that when we see an example of it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do an example. It's the best way to kind of see how stem and leaf diagrams work. So uh, in this example, 20 people are asked on the street for their age, uh, and that's given here in the kind of box. Uh, plot this data on a stem and leaf diagram. So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a line down like this. And then you start by writing, so the first um, the first number in each of these digits, so we have one, we have a two, uh, a three, a four, a five, all the way up to six. So those are the numbers we're gonna write. We're gonna write one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the stem bit of the stem and leaf diagram, and now we're gonna draw each of the leaves. So what we're gonna do is draw numbers uh, in here, and each number you write, so each O I've written there, uh, that counts for a number. So the most important thing is to make sure that you keep it really neat and keep everything in these sort of neat rows. You shouldn't have to write rows. Sometimes in the exam, if they ask you to write it, they'll give you a grid, uh, but either way, you just have to make sure to keep it nice and neat. So we start with the lowest always. So the lowest in this grid here is gonna be the 11. Um, so I'm gonna write one here, and then after that, it's 12. So then I'll write the, the two. And then we keep going, we find the next lowest, which is going to be 16. Um, so, no, it's 15, sorry, actually. So it's 15, I'll cross the 5 out, and then the 6. Uh, and then notice there are two 16s. So the first one's also 16. So what you do then is you just write another 6. There's no problem with that. And then 19, and then so on. So I'll just start the, the first of the 20. So the first one is just 20 there. It's gonna be two zero, and like I said, just make sure it stays underneath it. We have two twenty twos, and after that, then I'll just skip ahead and I'll uh, finish the rest of it quickly. So twenty two. So hopefully you guys get the idea. I'm just gonna finish it really quick. I'll pause the video and then run through it. And um, but you get the idea. You have to go through it one by one and cross each number off as you get it. Keep them nice and orderly. Uh, always start from lowest to highest, and then yeah, if you have two, then just write the two and two here. So there, I just quickly finished the rest of it. Uh, so it's almost done now, it's not quite done. It's almost done. Uh, the last thing you have to do, and this is really, really important, is you have to write a key. So I'll just write key there, and then we'll say, we'll pick four and four here. So if you have four line four, that equals to 44. And the reason this is so important is you can have other stem and leaf diagrams. So I'll just give a quick example. So say for example, you're ask, you ask, asking, people for their weight in pounds. So you'd have numbers like, I don't know, 145, 160, 170, etc. Um, so then your stem and leaf diagram would look a little bit different. It would look like 14, 15, 16. And so you'd have, just for our here, 145, 160. And so just it's really important to say that in this case then, the key is say 16 line O is equal to 160. So just that it's different for every stem and leaf diagram, so a key is super important to show the differences. So I hope I haven't confused with that example. Um, but yeah, it was just to prove a point that the key is uh, super important. So that's almost it. So that's um, almost all the stem and leaf diagrams. The things we can see really easily are the most common age, so you can see repeated numbers quite easily, and the most common sort of uh, range of age, say like the 40s or the, in this case it's the teens. Um, so those are some of the uses, and we're going to look at one more type of stem and leaf diagram, which is a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. So I'll just scroll down and write something here. So here I've just done a quick, uh, quick example. So look up here to start. So it just says the back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram, and it's useful for comparing data sets. That's what this back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram is used for. And the example we have is the age of people from a street in Dublin and Connemara. So on the left we have Connemara, in the middle we have Dublin, sorry, on the right we have Dublin, sorry, in the middle we have our stem, like we had last time, and then on the right and the left we have our leaves. So again, it tries to be as ordered as possible, uh, and you can just see the kind of slight difference in the data, so there's more people up here in Dublin, and there's more people down here in Connemara, so that says people are slightly younger in Dublin than in Connemara. This is just a total example, I'm not sure, of real ages. And again, it's really, really important to have a key, so on this side we're going to have four line four is equal to 44 and I'll just say that's the that's the key so you can put that in a box if you want um, 
And then on this side also, we're gonna have a key. I'll do it in yellow. Um, so I'll say the key on this side, it's six line two is equal to 26. So because there's a two in the middle here, that's the stem. And then that's the leaf from it. That doesn't mean 62 because they're written like that. It means 26 because you're kind of reading from right to left. So it's a little bit backwards, but you read this, this digit first and then this digit to make 26. Um, so you just have to make sure to include the key for both sides because it'll it'll be different. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Those are kind of, I guess, the basics of stem and leaf plots. And they've come up quite a few times, so make sure you're comfortable with them. But uh, yeah, that's it for, for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at histograms. So we will, yeah, we'll see you then. Uh, if you liked the video, like and subscribe and share with your friends. And we'll see you next time.